sense of place as much as you probably wanted it to be, you know, whether it's financially wise or even just the way that the reception from some of the, from the viewers and stuff. Did you ever think that maybe at some point that things weren't going to work out and maybe you had to course correct? Yeah, I think, well, I think we just had no idea what was going to happen. <laughs> you know, like it was, it's funny you bring up that 2014 Comic-Con because that was when we had decided we were going to leave. Yeah, I remember that. Um, and, um, and we kind of, we've told that story since then, but we never, um, but it was that it was mid October when we when we when we the, internally the four of us decided and and right after that we went to talk to our bosses and then no one knew somehow that secret was kept in the industry until January which was really great um, but um, even in, you know at IGN we didn't tell anyone until December except for our bosses so it was you know we we had no idea I was really scared you know um, you know games journalists don't make a lot of money and Greg and I were in a unique position where we were both making way more than the normal person in that industry did. And, um, you know, I, I, you know, editors get hired at like, you know, in San Francisco, which is, you know, unfathomable and unconscionable at $40,000 or $45,000 a year. I was making way more than that at IGN. And, um, you know, and I knew a lot of people below me that were working on my team or that were working on our team where, where, you know, would have killed for my, you know, for being senior editor of IGN and for walking away from sure. a lot of money. Um, and, and actually walking away from, you know, they, they offer me a lot of things to stay, you know, a lot more than I was making in a lot a cool, you know, a better position. And I, I, I walked away from that. And part of me felt so presumptuous, you know, like, who are you to think that you can just walk away from this and succeed? There's a lot of pride to you it. don't have what it, I think there was. And I think that it was a lot of, um, there was a lot of the four of us were really kind of convincing each other without anyone really knowing any better than the other person up. that this was going <laughs> to, yeah, that, that, that it would work. And I think Greg was obviously the most gung ho. Um, and I think I was the least gung ho and, um, there was a loyalty a a aspect to it too. You know, I owed a lot, you know, I was at IGN and related to IGN way longer than those other guys. And so, um, you know, there was a loyalty factor. I, I turned down a lot of things to go do other things over time because I didn't want to leave IGN. And mm -hmm. so, um, so yeah, I had no idea. I had no idea what it was, how it was going to work. Did I, did I real, did I think that it was going to work out the way that it worked out and that, you know, that the golden era of kind of funny to me will always be 2015. And, yeah. um, and did I think it was going to be as fun as it was? Did I think we were going to be as successful as we were all that? No, I had no, I had no idea whatsoever that that was going to happen. So it's, um, you know, it was an exciting time, but it was an uncertain time. But, you know, I, I prepared. I saved money and, and had, you know, freelance lined up in case I needed it. And, you know, but it all worked out. It all worked out great. So let me ask you, do you feel like that stress or at least that anxiety or that fear, with, you know, about things like not knowing how things are going to work out or even things worried about things going badly and stuff, did that carry over into kind of funny even during that golden year of 2015 to 2016? Yeah, we, we, we tried to work. We tried to leave nothing out on the field, right? Like we took every opportunity that came towards us, which, which started to change the company materially. And that was kind of one of the reasons why I wasn't happy with it anymore. But we... We ended, you know, we, we took every opportunity. We tried to build a, a, a nice bank account to be able to pay ourselves, to be able to pay freelancers, to kind of bring ourselves the security that we needed um, and wanted in order to grow, in order to, like, live our lives. San Francisco is not a cheap place. I'm not, you know, 18 Super or 19 expensive. years old anymore. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's outrageous. I mean, my, I always tell people that my three-bedroom apartment in San Francisco, which I got during the recession, was rent-controlled, and it was about three grand a month, which is a steal, you know, and if, I think when I left, um, you know, they, they must have raised it to at least 55, if not wow. higher, you know. So it's it's a really expensive place to live. And um, you you just need some security in that. And and you also, you know, there's a pride. I like to win. There is a pride to it, you know, and I want to win. I, with Podcast Beyond, I didn't do Podcast Beyond to be the second or third best video game podcast. I did it to be the best video game podcast. When I ran IGN PlayStation, I didn't want it to just be another PlayStation channel. I wanted it to be the best destination for PlayStation on the Internet. And so with Kind of Funny and with P.S. I Love You and all these things and Colin was right, I wanted it to be the best. And, you know, I think we had a really good time, a moment in time where everything was sinking and everything was awesome. And um, a lot of that came from, from calibrating on a day-to-day -day or week-to-week -week basis. And um, we did. So, yeah, of course, like, uh, we... The, the, Everything changed constantly, and I'm sure still is for them today. I, I agree. Again, I remember watching all that stuff. Everything as it happens, you know, as an observer on the outside looking in. It was a cool time to be a fan because, again, you guys were really kicking ass a lot. Like, every single day almost throughout the entire week, almost 365 minus. I think you guys took used to take breaks during the holidays, like for Christmas and stuff. But uh, one of the things I want to know is that was there any sort of, like, shift in mentality or shift in, like, perspective that you had to do once you were already in, in, in the trenches? 
sketches were kind of funny and things were already moving and like you were producing or at least you know putting up all these different shows you were doing the different daily shows eventually was it not kind of funny games daily but um was it colin greg live at one point yeah yeah, yeah there was, there was yeah. a lot of different stuff was there like a, a a mental shift that you had to do in order to kind of you know keep things going keep things moving and keep things winning Yes, I think, well, I think, I think one of the major things that, um, that I had to do and to kind of adjust with was like letting go of this, this singular vision that I had in my own mind of what we were supposed to be doing and kind of be a little more collaborative, um, in that regard. And so, you know, it seemed like it was going, and, and I think Greg had told the story that it seemed like it was going to be easier than it ended up being right. Like the, True. we, we, we didn't think that it was going to be we thought it would be as hard as what we did at IGN. And I think that people underestimate how hard it is to produce content. And I think a lot of people produce amateur content. That's just not very good. And they learn very quickly how hard it actually is to be authoritative, to, to be good on camera, to be good in front of a microphone. So there's skill there, but we thought we would be able to do the morning show, do these podcasts, do these let's plays and have free time and actually like explore things in our lives. And what we found out was that it was the exact opposite. Um, I had never worked more in my life than I did, you know, in those beginning times of kind of funny with, with rare exception until I founded Collins last stand and then I, I, I you know, 60 hour week is a good, is a nice short week for me now. Mm. So, um, so it's again, cal constant calibration, constant changing, constant adaptation and evolution of the product that I think comes along with creating online content. As you see what people like and what people don't, that kind of feedback. I had no, when I, when I came up with the idea for Collins, uh, or for, uh, Colin and Greg live, I had no idea it was going to be as silly and, and, and ridiculous as it ended up being. And, um, uh, and that, that's what people wanted. That, that was the other crazy thing. Right. And, uh, when we, um, did the let's plays, we thought we would do a let's play every day and that would be easy, but there was no reason to do them every day. So you just, you, your assumptions get checked in the real world. Was, was there ever a moment like when you saw like people were really reacting to something like very well and you just thought to yourself like, what the hell is the matter with people? Like, why would we even bother doing this? But yet there's so many people watching these videos, so many people commenting on this stuff, so many people giving you positive reinforcement, positive feedback. And you were just like, why the hell is this like this? This is like so completely counterproductive here. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of it is just a lot of what we learned was counterintuitive based on the fact that at least for me that I had no baseline for, you know, for being such a veteran in the gaming industry and for just doing whatever I wanted to do for all those years, I had no idea what other people were doing. So there was nothing to compare it against. So when I was, so when we stopped doing podcast beyond, um, you know, we'd freelance for a little while to do that. And then we stopped doing it. It was, uh, I was, I was shocked. I mean, it was heartening, but I was shocked. I was like, why do people miss us doing this so much? There's a million video game podcasts, right? And then when we yeah. came back into PS, I love you. Everyone found a home again. And, it made me realize I'm like, wow, like there, this, this stuff means something to people. And the things that you think don't mean anything to people are the things that you kind of just are flipping about can be the most important thing of a person's life, something that they really look forward to. And so, yeah, I, I think that all wrapped up in this, this idea of, of understanding and knowing what you're doing is a whole lot of n having no idea what you're doing, you know, and, and, that, and, and that, and that form of letting go, I think is a really powerful and humbling kind of situation. You know what I think it is also? I kind of relate it to music. Like, if you have, like, a favorite song that's a classic, that's, like, part of, like, an OG album, and all of a sudden, like, the same artist starts putting out, like, a bunch of new stuff, and it just doesn't have that same spark, but then all of a sudden in the club, that one track that you know, like, hits that sweet spot, I kind of relate it to that. It almost has that same reactive effect, that same chemistry that you guys have with Podcast Beyond, that going into PS I Love You XOXO, and everybody just felt, reacted the same way, and just felt like things just felt right with that, as opposed to everything well, else that was going on. Well, I feel like that's a common theme, and it's something I still hear to this day. I don't know that, you know, I want to speak for Greg, but I, I, I feel like Greg and I in that in the gaming world will never do anything that's that reaches as many people or that resonates with as many people as what we did with Podcast Beyond and with PS I Love You, and I accept that. You know, that's fine. I'm sure Greg probably accepts that too. That like nothing, no podcast, nothing will ever resonate like the way we when we got together and did it right. You know, and. That's cool. It doesn't mean it has to last forever, but it's nice that it's that cool exists. That it's yours. You know? It's cool that you, it's your something that you guys directly influence and directly create and it's directly, directly responsible for, for a lot of people out there. Yeah, I, I think that's cool. And I think it's great that, that it resonates. And I hope that people, you know, carry that with them. That it's, you know, I, I, we're, we're, ne we're never going to do a show together again, but it's, it's, but it does, you know, it, it's, it's there. There's hundreds of episodes for you, you know, not that <laughs> the timeliness of them doesn't, you know, kind of negates their usefulness, but um 
you know, there, it's cool that that exists. And it's, I, I find it nice that people feel that way. I don't find it when people are like, man, I really miss you in gaming. I really miss you doing stuff with Greg. I really miss you podcasting about PlayStation. I don't take that as an insult. You know, I take that as like, wow, I really, a high compliment. I really stuck with this person. It's a very high compliment. It's one of the highest compliments ever. And I'm sure Greg feels the same way that, you know, even though he endeavors in the gaming industry to this day and does his, you know, I don't, I'm not really sure exactly what they're doing, but you know, their, their new shows and stuff like that, that they're probably not going to resonate nearly as much as beyond or PS. I love you did with anyone. And that's, that's okay, you know, because that was a place in time kind of situation, and I think that that's nice. That's that's our bond with the audience and our, with each other, and I think that that's great. I hope it. I hope it. I hope it rings through the, the ages, as it were. <laughs> I think it will, because at least for someone like me, and again, you know, not speaking for anybody else, but just, just through my own personal experience, I feel like a lot of the stuff that you guys talked about and the way you guys went about it, and I think the thought process and, and the way that you handled whether it was breaking news, even like crazy stuff like the PSN outage and stuff, there are always, I feel like, lessons and certain things that people could get out of listening to those past podcasts. Because I remember even just like preparing just for this one-on-one, -on -one, I went back and I listened to a few of the episodes and stuff, and it's just, it, it, it has those things where it's like you feel like you got something out of it some food for thought or something whether it was an important lesson or just a new perspective on something back then that i feel like people are always going to go back to those same episodes whether it's beyond or uh ps i love you and are going to get something out of it way into the future even way past even to when you guys are in your old age i hope so that would be awesome and i i feel like you know um that's that's great you know, like I, I, I've had time more recently to reflect on the past and to like kind of like be in the moment and and you know think about what's happened and what's gone on and what the future might hold and yeah and I, I, I feel like it's I feel like that that's just, that's just all positive for me that's just all that's all gravy like uh, but like I said before like yeah like I may I might never have the reach or the popularity that I did when I had when I did Beyond and PS I Love You and Greg might not either but that doesn't mean that what we're doing now doesn't resonate with a different audience for different reasons and all that kind of stuff. But we still, we'll always have that bond. Even if he and I never speak again, um, I like that we've left that imprint on people and it means a lot. I think that we were one of the most dynamic duos in, in, in games media history. I think a lot of people agree. And, um, I can't I, I, with that. it's, it's, a, it's an honor. It's an honor that, that it probably will not be replicated anytime soon. And that's cool. That's yeah. great. But it's, it's like, it's like the Beatles, right? Like, and not that I'm comparing us, to the Beatles in a way, but Beatles. I guess I am literally. I guess I, I guess I literally am comparing us to the Beatles. But just like any any great band that had this great run and then disappeared, you know. Definitely, I, and I agree. Uh, yeah. So anyway, but uh, you know, I guess yeah, like I said, I, I think it, it's a good word to say is timeless. And I think a lot. Of